So a few days ago, I released that gear set tier list video and that, well, it, uh, it, it wasn't perfect. I've had a lot of people coming up to me with criticism as to why I place certain gear sets in certain tiers. And don't get me wrong, I had a lot of positive feedback as well, but uh, being such a big critic towards the work that others always do, such as the massive employees working on the division, I think it's also a good time right now to reflect on my own work a bit and, uh, well, give that tier list another look uh, and just go over some of the things that people have said in a response to that. Oh, and while we're at it, I would also like to take the opportunity to talk about high-end builds later on into the video. That is something that a lot of people felt was missing from the original gear set tier list video. Uh, probably the most commented thing on that video was, but Marco, what about the high-end builds? Are they gonna be any good? And looking back at it, there was really no reason for me not to include that, so I honestly do not know why I didn't. But uh, yeah, we'll go over that later into the video. Coming back to the gear sets for just a moment, the thing that I've seen people telling me are things such as that Striker should not be tier 1 because it's garbage on consoles. Or people are wondering why I put Lone Star on the same tier as Alpha, when Lone Star only works with one super specific weapon combo and Alpha has a whole lot of other build possibilities. People have also said that Banshee should be tier 1 because of its strengths in the Dark Zone, but then other people have also said that it should be tier 3 because it is useless everywhere but in the Dark Zone. I have also had people comment about Nomad, because of course Nomad isn't the best thing you can run when you're always playing in a group. And I've even had a few guys saying that Final Measure should be higher up on the list because of its utility in Falcon Lost and Clear Sky. And to be honest, all of these things, they're true. You guys are right. The thing is, you can always come at these gear sets from a different angle, and depending on what angle you go with, one set might be higher up on the list than another, simply because one set performs much better than others in certain types of content. One set might do really well in the Dark Zone, while the other set does way better in PvE. And when I was thinking about the criteria for these tiers, when I was thinking about what makes a set a definitive tier 1 or tier 2 set, I honestly, I didn't really know. I tried to look at all the aspects of the game, you know, solo play, group play, PvP, PvE, less than specific things, and find the middle ground somewhere where I would say, yeah, that's where this gear set sits at. It wasn't just some lazy write-up, I field tested almost everything to large extents on the PTS, which is actually why I found out about things such as the Double Cassidy Lone Star setup. I would have never seen that coming had I not tested it out in practice. But uh, seeing all the comments on the video, it's become uh, somewhat obvious that a system like this, with tears, it's just not really working for the thing that I'm trying to do. I would like to say that if you've watched the whole 20 minute video, you probably have a very good indication as to which gear sets are going to be good, and why they're going to be good, and when they're going to be good. But a lot of people naturally take a look at the tier list, they see what's at the top, they see what's at the bottom, and then they just assume that I believe that these sets are the best or the worst for every single situation in the game possible. Which is of course not the case at all. The tier list, it's more meant for people who don't have the time to farm a min-maxed version of every single set in the game. Uh, this list is for people that just want to go with one or two builds that's going to be enough to do everything in the game. I believe there are quite some people like that that just want to go with one build and then min-max that all the way to heaven. And coming at the video from that angle, you might see as to why I put Striker or Nomad in tier 1 above something like Sentry or Alpha. Nomad and Striker are way better overall in the game, while Sentry or Alpha might do better in PvP and group play. I mean, let's be honest, if we're just talking about PvP group play, then Sentry would probably be tier 1. Now, of course, if you have every possible gear set, you can just swap to Striker when playing PvE alone, and you can just swap the Banshee when going into the DZ. And then you can even swap the final measure if you want to just farm some clear sky. But again, uh, a lot of people aren't going to have every single gear set in the game. And that is the exact reason why I made this list. It's to give people an indication of what gear set is going to give them the most value overall in all scenarios combined. For the future though, if I'm going to make something like this for the next update, I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach. Something that will give a better overview. Uh, I was thinking about splitting up the PvE and the PvP, or even split up the PC platform with the consoles. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. Um, I'm open to suggestions if you have a good idea, but what I don't want is for people to go into this patch with a skewed perspective on things. So now I hope that you sort of understand that. But uh, with that out of the way, there is one big mistake with the gear set video that I made, no matter how you look at it, no matter at what angle you come from. It has been pointed out by many already, but it is with the Deadeye set. 
Many people commented on it that it should have been put into tier 1, and after talking to some people and seeing some footage of it, I, I don't agree. I don't think it should be in tier 1, I think it should be above that, because uh, this set is ridiculously good when uh, combined with the SVD with a red dot sight so that you don't actually have to look through a scope to get use out of the 100% crit chance. Now, this is a mechanic I knew about. This is something that I mentioned in the video. I knew this was strong, but I didn't know it was this strong. Because the SVD is so accurate by nature, this basically allows people to spam the fire button and hit for 70,000 damage each hit. Now, I didn't have the chance to play with this combo on the PTS myself. Uh, the first two weeks of the PTS were kind of a mess, too much of a mess to really test. And then the second two weeks of the PTS, players weren't allowed to buy sealed caches. So I kind of relied on my RNG from last stand and the accounts of my friends to test out as much as possible. However, an SVD Deadeye combo is not something that I was able to test out on the PTS, and so I overlooked this when making that tier list video. But in the background of this video right now, you can see some footage from uh, Witz's channel. You probably know him, he's a pretty big streamer, really good player as well. Uh, and he did have the chance to test that combo out, and as you can see, it absolutely folds people over both up close, but also from really, really far away. I honestly think it's a bit too strong. Uh, the last thing I want to see for 1.6 is a meta where we again have a patch where one gear set is so much more dominant than the others. We already had that in 1.1, in 1.3, in 1.5 with Sentry, Tacticians, Deadeye, Reclaimer and then Alpha Bridge. And every single time it has kind of felt bad, it has made a lot of sets that would otherwise be great pretty much obsolete, so I can really only see this going two ways. Either the accuracy from the SVDs gets a nerf, or Deadeye is going to need a rework. I'd much rather prefer the Deadeye rework, as I know that many people enjoy the SVD and how it works, but seeing how close the patch is actually coming, I think the possibility of the SVD getting a big nerf is much more likely. It's not really something I want to see, I'd rather have Deadeye get a complete rework so that it actually works with other snipers as well. But honestly, if nothing happens, that is the worst case scenario. If they don't do something, then this is all you're gonna see in last stand after a few weeks in. So yeah, get mad at me for calling a nerf, get it out of your system, press that dislike button, I know you want to. I'd still take that over a Deadeye only meta. Anyway, now that I went over some of the things that I wanted to say regarding that tier list video, it's time to talk about the all high-end builds, because so many people have been requesting me to talk about that. And yes guys, all high-ends, it is going to be strong. If I were to put it on the tier list, I would definitely put it at tier 1 as well. Calling it much stronger than anything else in the game is kind of unfair though. I don't think it's necessarily stronger than some of the gear sets out there. Yes, you have a lot of cool and separate talents, but of course you have to keep in mind that when we're talking about an all high-end build, most people picture six items in their head and then compare that to a gear set. But you have to of course keep in mind that a gear set only takes up four slots. So you can have a gear set and then still two out of those six high-end items on your build. But if you build it right, an all high-end build, it can definitely be at least on par with anything else in the game. Except for Deadeye, of course. What I would personally go with is uh, of course the skill gloves for that 16% extra damage. Then the shortbow knee pads, because well, that's pretty much the only option you have there. I would go with a refreshed mask, a Barret vest, a specialized backpack, and then for the holster I would choose between either Nimble or the Bliss holster. Nimble is of course very good for that additional healing that allows you to heal back up in between kills by just going from cover to cover, and the Bliss holster can actually be used to give yourself up to 18% more damage if you stack it properly with the R93 pistol. So you can choose here, more healing or more damage. What you go with, that's really up to you. Now, what I like about the high-end build as well is that it can be used with any weapon and any skill, unlike some of the gear sets in the game. It offers a lot of variety in playstyle without having to change up your entire setup or farm for some new items just to play something else. And if you feel like you're not doing enough damage, well, you can always swap something out, maybe a Reckless Vest or a Tenacious Mask. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video though. I hope that this cleared some things up a little bit about the tier list. Just because something is tier 1, that doesn't mean that it's always the best option. And just because something is tier 3, that doesn't mean that you cannot play with that set. The whole thing should mostly be used in the context of if you could only choose, if you could only play with one set and one set only, then which set would that be? This is kind of to help the players that generally only have the time to farm one or two builds, and that's it. It's just a guideline of what I think is going to do well in 1.6, and what I believe is going to be more situational. If you want to go and play with Hunter's Fate and you're doing well with it, then uh, hey, I'm not gonna tell you otherwise. Go ahead, man. It's a loot game. 
As always, though, I will see you guys later. Or, like they say in the Netherlands, see you later. <laughs>